All right. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Grace Church. It is good to be with you. If you are in this room or with us online, I'm going to ask that we go ahead and stand as we get ready to worship, as we get ready to usher in the presence of the Lord. We come here to worship one God, one King, and that is Jesus. And so this morning, will you just pray with me as we get ready to enter in? Can we be desperate for the Lord this morning? Can we be desperate to be in his presence? Can we be desperate to have relationship with him? Now is the time to enter in and allow God to do what he needs to do. So let's reset our weeks. Let's reset our hearts this morning and allow God to move and show us something new this morning. Is that okay with you guys? All right. Well, church, will you pray with me? Jesus, we glorify your God, we come here before you. We come before the foot of the cross and we ask that you would do what you want to do. Father, we submit to you, God. We submit our lives and we submit the whole process of everything, God. So Jesus, be welcomed here. Be worshiped. And Father, I pray that you would just fill this place with your peace, your joy. God, would we experience a joy like no other this morning. So Jesus, come and have your way. Everybody said, Amen. You 
Don't you get shy when you lift up your shoes Cause you got a lie inside of those Get up and praise the Lord Oh come on my soul Don't you get shy when you lift up your shoes Cause you got a lie inside of those All right, come on, church, let's sing this out. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me and lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those rooms. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, sing again. Oh, come on, my soul. So sing it out. Of nothing else fit for a king. 
except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I, so I throw in my hands and praise you again and again. Sing it out. Church, let's sing this out.
singing hallelujah to the king of kings God we give you all the praise God we come before you we humble ourselves to be in your presence God God I ask as we continue this service would our eyes and our ears be open to what you are doing God would the word come alive and would we be changed from the inside out God would we look more like Jesus coming out of this place God, I thank you, and we glorify your holy name. And everybody said, amen. Yeah, come on, give some praise this morning. Absolutely. Well, hey, it is a good morning to see you guys. Um, we're going to transition to the next part of our service, which is called um, Community Time. So what I want you to do is to turn around to the people next to you, shake a hand, give a high five, maybe give a hug if you're cool with that. But let's start being family, y'all. Good morning, Grace Church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so if you didn't know when you walked in the doors, you signed out up for a conversation here. So if you're here, say, I'm here. They're here. They're good. awake. 
Well, hello, good morning. I'm Dylan McConnell. Uh, my wife and I lead the amazing youth here at Grace Church, and this is... Hi, I'm Kari. My husband, Elisha, and I are the associate pastors here, and we are excited to be with you guys today. Come on. Yeah, so right now, we are going to transition into our tithes and offerings. But before we do, you know that we had an announcement that we forgot to announce last time? Did I'm gonna, we? I'm going to do it before because it was my fault. Do you know that The Basics is starting today? Woo! Have you guys heard about The Basics? The Basics is a four-week class where we go, talk about who we are as Grace Church, a little bit about what we believe, find out a little bit about you. And guys, today it is starting after this service over in the Gathering Center. And we've got a spot for you. If you have not signed up, you can still come. We want to have Elisha and I are going to be there. We are going to uh, have lunch with you and talk a bit about Grace Church. So we're going to talk about that. But now... We're going to transition into our time of tithes and offerings. You know, here at Grace Church, we believe that giving is actually an extension of our worship. And we believe that because we know that the closest thing to our hearts is our wallets. Amen? So when we give, it's it, here at Grace, it actually, it's not about us getting your money. We're not trying to manipulate you. No, no, no. It's between you and God. And the truth is, is that when we give to God, as he commands us in the Bible, we get to extend our worship and our trust to him. And so we're going to transition into that time right now here at Grace. There's a couple of ways you can give. You can give online through our church center app or our website or in the black box in the back. Will you pray with me? Lord, we love you so much. God, I do pray that as we give today, Lord, it would be true worship to you, Lord God, that any of the baggage that comes along with that would fall away and that we would have eyes to see what your word says about generosity. God, I pray that we would give with hearts of worship and that you would bless each one of us in that journey. We love you, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Continuing with that heart of prayer. We got some awesome announcements. And first thing is, is listening prayer is happening this Thursday. This Thursday. Everybody say prayer. And then here's the key word. Everybody say listen. There we go. Okay. So this Thursday, come ready to listen and pray with God. I think it's we're so good at talking a lot. And sometimes we forget that we serve a God that speaks. And we need to take time to listen. Amen. Amen. 7 p.m., my friends. 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. Hey, we also have this week a lot of stuff going on. This Saturday, all my lady friends, we have Sisterhood Breakfast coming up this Saturday. We want you to sign up so that we have enough for everybody. But let's be real. Sometimes, women, we do not always provide the most substantial food for us. So this time it is bacon-centered. So come this Saturday for Sisterhood Breakfast. And I heard a lot of competition, actually, between the men's ministry and the women's ministry on who could eat enough bacon or more bacon. It's us. It got really it's heated. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was that intense. Um, but speaking of bacon, we have children's dedication happening next weekend. I don't see the connection. Some of them were listening, and okay, they caught okay, that. That's okay. a funny transition there. Yeah, don't know how to go from bacon to children. But we love our children here. Amen. As much as we love our bacon. Um, and the child dedication is so important. Here's why. Because I was dedicated when I was a child, and I still have people that were there on my dedication day to pray over me, and they still talk about it this day. I remember when you were a little baby and we prayed over you. And I get to actually walk out that. People who are contending for my future to be sown into the kingdom. And that's what we're doing. So if you are interested in having your children or child dedicated, you can go on our church app or you can register online for that. And we'll be doing that next weekend. Yeah. And finally, we want you to mark your calendars for April 28th. On that day, we are going to be having our sunset service. What's happening is that there is a big group from us here at Grace Church who are running or walking in the World Vision Marathon to raise money for clean water. It's going to be awesome. But because there's such a good group of us, in the morning, we are actually canceling our regular morning services at 9 and 11. So we are not coming here at 9 and 11. Instead, we will be coming together for one service at 4.30 p.m. And I'm hearing there's a lot of cool stuff happening. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be time together. I hear there might be some pizza. So make sure that you come. 4.30 p.m., April 28th, one service here. Good? All right. There's a lot of ways to connect. You can check them all out online at gracechurch.com. That's church without the U because you bring the U to church. 
Pastor JC. Woo! Well, good morning. Yeah, that uh, that service that we have on uh, the twenty eighth it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to that and celebrating all that walk or run, as well as those of you that didn't walk or run. Um, but also, um, I don't know if you know this, but this is a very special Sunday. Um, if you have uh, little ones or children um, and know about the show Bluey, a new episode dropped today. Just letting you know that. Um, just one eight-minute episode. It's a very special one. It dropped at 7 a.m. this morning, and my four-year-old was on top of it. Um, <laughs> And I, like, I thought, I thought he was going to pass out by how, funny, how much he was laughing because he thought it was so funny. Um, but next week, another new Bluey that's like 24 minutes long. Biggest Bluey ever. So just a heads up, set your DVRs. Go to Disney Plus. It'll be great. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Bluey is a great children's show about Australian dogs. Um, and it's pretty much the best thing ever. Um, all right, enough about that. Um, this morning, we are starting a new series uh, that is based out of what's called the Lord's Prayer, and, um, and we're calling it Prayer and Action. Um, but prayer is such a big topic. Like, there are so many things that we could talk about with prayer. We could talk about the different kinds of prayer, how, how prayer is letting God know the cries of our hearts and what we, what we need. You know, we see that in Matthew 7, starting in, in verse 7. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's one part of prayer, the cries of our heart. We could talk about how prayer is sitting and waiting and listening like we're going to do on Thursday. We could, we could talk about, about how there are prayers of comfort, prayers of intercession. There are so many things that we could talk about in regards to prayer because Prayer is such a big and, and so many, so many angles to prayer. But this morning, we're going to focus on the dynamic of prayer and action. Because I think sometimes we view prayer as something passive, or prayer as something where we tell God what we want, and it's like we've passed him the ball. And now we're out of it. We've made our prayer. That's all we're doing. And then that's it. There's nothing else for us to do. Through this series, I want us to understand that prayer is not a passive action, nor is prayer something that where once we pray, we're all done and, and, and we don't have anything else to do but that prayer is meant to spur us to some type of action. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for who you are. I pray that you open your word to us this morning. Soften our hearts. Speak to us. Thank you for all you're doing in and through us. In your name we pray, amen. Now let me quickly just set the stage for prayer. Because prayer at its very basic foundation is us talking and having a conversation with God. We let God know what's going on with us. And typically like we talked about just a moment ago, we're really good at the prayers when we need something when we're deeply troubled, when our life has been un upended in some way. We cry out, help, save us, 
save me. This morning, if you're here because something is going on in your life and you're looking for answers, you're looking for comfort, you're looking for peace, that you're looking for something to address the deep pain and confusion in your life, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're seeking God. This is often the most, this is when we're the most prayerful in these seasons. I'm desperate and I need divine intervention. Now there's nothing wrong with this, but this isn't what, this isn't the only thing our prayers are meant to be or meant to be about. Because prayer is a way for us to stay connected to God, for us to know God, to be connected with him, we have to spend time with him. We can do this through a few different things. We can do this through reading our Bible. We can do this through worship. And then obviously we do this through prayer. These are the things that keep us connected to God. And just a disclaimer, if, if God is telling you something or you think God is telling you something, it is going to be backed up by what you see in the Bible. God is never going to tell you to do something that is contrary to the Bible, to the word he has already given us. God is never going to tell you to have an affair. God is never going to tell you to embezzle money, you know, even though you're going to tithe on what you embezzle. <laughs> he's never going to do that. God will always be consistent in what he speaks to you with the Bible. Do you have a friend or family that, that you only hear from them when they need something from you? They might be called your children. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How often is that our relationship with God? That the only time he hears from us is when we're in crisis or we need something from him. My heart is, I want you to be close to Jesus. I want you to spend time with him. I want you to pray, talk to him. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to worship. And so prayer connects us to God and helps us understand his heart for others. And this leads to an action piece. Because we need to combine prayer and action. We're not meant to just pray and only pray. But as we listen to the Lord, he's going to give us an action. He's going to tell us to do something. Through prayer, through the cries of our heart, we may hear him tell us to do something, and it is up to us to do it. I, I had this image as I was thinking about this message of, of, of being in a room. And the, it's a windowless room, but the only thing is there's a door. And as we pray, and we're praying, God, help us with this situation or that situation, or God, I, I'm looking for wisdom or advice on this or that. That as we pray... I just have this image of the door opening. But we stay in the room. We stay in the room. We're like, God, I'm here. I'm here in the room. Hear my cries. And we don't realize that he opened a door. And he's asking us to walk out. But I don't know what's out there. It's scary. I don't want to do that. I, Lord, I'm right here. Answer my prayer. And he's saying, go through the door. <laughs> the answer to your prayer is through the door. But we stay in the room. Which leads us to the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew, Jesus is in the middle of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And this is a long section of teaching in Matthew. 
where Jesus is telling his followers and us, this is what the kingdom of God is like. This is how the kingdom of God functions. This is how it works. And he gives us this prayer saying, this is how you should pray. Isn't it great when the Lord occasionally gives us something very explicit, <laughs> very clear? He says, this is how you should pray. And over the next few weeks, we're going to unpack this prayer that if you've been around church for any extended period of time, you've probably heard this a million times. But it's an amazing prayer. And this is what Jesus says about prayer in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they, will, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have, have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not in tem into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I don't know about you, but oftentimes when I see this passage, when I see this scripture, I want to say it like, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, but that's just me. Um, but this is an amazing prayer. And oftentimes if it's something that we've done over and over and over again, we, we forget the power and the wisdom that is in it. You see, this prayer is, is what I like to call a scaffolding prayer. It's, it's the type of prayer that we should be doing where it's relational, it's meaningful to us, where we're using common, our common language. You see, there was a problem in other religions that Jesus was talking about in verse 7 and 8 where he says, and when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Basically, what Jesus is saying is, in all these other religions, there were chants. There were prayers where it's just like, just keep saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Just repeat it rapidly or change it up a little bit because if you find the right combination of magic words, the God you're praying to is going to answer. And so what Jesus is saying is right out of the get-go is like, don't be like them. You don't need to have chance. You don't need to try to magic words. But put your heart in it. Put your language in it. Our prayer should be our own words, how we talk. They should be relational, not trying to trick God, but rather pour our soul out to him. Now, there are hundreds of years of amazing prayers that followers of Jesus have written. And there are some really great ones. Oftentimes we can see them if you've ever been to what we would call liturgical church, where there are certain prayers at certain times. There's nothing wrong with those. If that is part of your practice where you where you have certain prayers that you just pray over and over, maybe this passage of scripture is one of them. There's nothing wrong with that because you're putting your heart into it. It's helping you. But prayer is meant as we, as the scripture also says, pray without ceasing is meant to be just a conversation with God. We don't have to say magic words to get God to listen to us to hear us, to answer our prayers. We can just keep talking to him. While we may not try to use our own words to trick God, how many of us do the thing where we are like, okay, I have this big thing that I want to ask God about, so I'm going to live really good for a couple of days so that by the time I go and ask God about this, 
He'll be like, well, I have to answer you. You've been good for a couple of days. You've, really, you've read your Bible really good. You've, you've been praying a lot. How often do we do things like that? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's never a bad thing to live the way God wants you to live. But if you're doing it because you want God to answer something for you, that's not the right motivation. But no matter what, ultimately our prayers should move us and inform us of the actions we need to take in our life as we follow Jesus. Now, am I saying that we can work and fulfill our own prayers through our own actions? No, no, no. What I am saying is that our prayers help us follow Jesus and Jesus leads us to the actions that can help make a difference. It's like going back to that door example of being in the room. We pray, we cry out to God. We know there's a door. And instead of waiting for God to answer, instead of listening to what God said, we go over and we start jiggling that handle. We start trying to open that door. And we may actually be able to open it. And we walk through. But Jesus didn't tell us yet. Jesus didn't open the door. We opened the door. The, the most famous biblical example of this is in the life of Abraham. In a quick, quick recap, Abraham, he's in Genesis. He was a godly man. He was following God. He was a wealthy man. And he had a wife named Sarah. And they were getting up there in age, and they didn't have any kids. And this was really distressing. Like, who was Abraham going to give everything over to? Who was going to continue on the family line if he didn't have an heir? Those were, that was a big deal. So one day, God meets him, and God makes him a promise. He says, you're going to have, you're gonna have a, a son. And he had him look up into the stars and say, your descendants are going to be as numerous as the stars and the sand. And Abraham believed him. Abraham said, yes and amen, let's, let's go. And then a little over a decade goes by, and nothing happened. And so Abraham and Sarah decided to open the door on their own. Sarah takes one of her slaves, says, here, Abraham, have a kid with her. And Abraham's like, all right, cool, let's do this. She has a kid. Prayer fulfilled. We did it. Got a son. But there were big problems. And there were big issues. And Abraham finds out, no, that is not the child that God promised you. You walked through the door on your own. So 25 years after the first promise, Abraham finally has a son with Sarah. 25 years. They have Isaac. God finally opened the door, and they finally walked through it. Now, we can talk about the action that Abraham and Sarah had to take to have Isaac, but there might be kids in the room. They, they had to have sex. Um, <laughs> that was the action they had to take. May the Lord's actions, never mind. Um, <laughs> when I was in my early 20s, I, I said a prayer that I think a lot of people in their early 20s 
uh, might do, and that is I started praying for a spouse. Um, I, I, I knew my introverted, awkward self, and I just said, you know, God, if you could really help me out in that when I meet my spouse, um, could you do something like make it seem different than like most of my interactions? Like, I, and I literally said this. I said, Lord, I am going to need you to slap me upside the head and say, like, there's something different here. I would say probably, I don't even know how many years, probably eight, nine years go by. I completely, completely forgot about that prayer. And I'm, I'm at a, a Foursquare conference. I'm talking to some friends. And uh, the sister of one of, of these guys that I was, I was friends with comes up and starts talking to him and, and we meet and we get introduced. And um, I don't know if she even knows this story. Um, and there was something different. Like it, it, it literally felt like, like, I, like somebody slapped me upside the head. And it was like, huh. Who is this? <laughs> and a few months later, I, I finally decided to shoot my shot um, over Facebook Messenger, as one did back then, um, because she lived in California, and I lived in Washington. And that's how my now wife Amber and I started talking and I it wasn't until I think after we got engaged that I remembered that prayer that I had prayed a few times all the way back then and I realized God opened the door I waited and God opened the door Took me a few months to walk through the door, but I walked through the door. We need to make sure when we pray that we're following Jesus into the action he wants us to take. When he wants us to take it. And not hiding behind, he hasn't told me to do anything yet when we actually have already stopped listening Stop hearing. Stop waiting. Sometimes, sometimes we don't even need to actually wait on the Lord when he tells us something. Because the Bible has already told us to do it. Like, we never have to wait to be told to go love someone. We never have to wait to show love to somebody. No matter who they are, no matter who they believe or what they believe, we're always called to love people because that's very clear in the Bible. And there are numerous things in the Bible that are like that. We don't have to pray about that and wait. He's already answered that prayer. How... How do I relate to this friend? How do I relate to this coworker? How do I relate to this family member who has done this? The answer is always love them. Because scripture is very clear that in all of those circumstances, we are to love them. Knowing the Bible helps us know what action we are to take, when to take it, and how to posture ourselves for prayerful action. James 1, starting in verse 22, do not merely listen to the word and, all, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says 
is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and then after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Knowing scripture helps us know the actions we take as we pray. Because like I said, all the answers the Lord's going to give us is backed up in scripture. It will never contradict. But we need we need to keep following Jesus. I don't want anyone to come to the conclusion today that they need to be they need to be the answer to their own prayer. But rather that we pray regularly without ceasing that we that we speak, that we listen, that we do what the word tells us so we know when to go, we know when to wait as we merge our prayers and our actions. Ultimately, we are living in the kingdom in his kingdom. We talked about the kingdom a lot a couple weeks ago. This prayer in the middle of Jesus telling his people, this is how the kingdom of God works. This is how we live in his kingdom. He tells us that the first thing that we should do when we pray is say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What, what that means and the significance of that is that what Jesus is saying is that we should always ground our prayers and life in knowing and recognizing who God is. If we always start by recognizing that our Father in heaven, whose name is holy, whose name is sacred, that's what hallowed means, whose name is to be honored above all other names because he is God, he is the king of kings. Therefore, he must be honored above all things in our life. And so this morning, our action to our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, is that we need to make sure that we have nothing above God in our lives. that we have nothing above Jesus. That nothing is more important than him in our lives. All our prayers should be founded in the recognition that our heavenly father is holy and above all things. If there is something above God, we have to reprioritize our life. In the kingdom in any kingdom, there is nothing above the king. Therefore, as we live in the kingdom of God, we need to have nothing above the king. Not our sin, not ourselves, not our possessions, our passions, not our pain, not our needs. Nothing should be above God, our father and benevolent king. He is a good father. He is a benevolent king. Therefore, we need to take action to tear down the idols in our lives and elevate God to his rightful place. An idol is anything that we have above God in our lives. All throughout the Bible, we see problems with idols, where people worshiped another God, worshiped something they created, there are so many verses about idols being bad. Now, this is, this is just a freebie. This is, this is one of my favorite in talking about idols. Leviticus 26, 30. I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and pile your dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols, and I will abhor you. 
Oh, isn't that just so good? Oh, just warms your spirit. When God talks about piling dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols. He was speaking to Israel and he says, this is what will happen if you have idols. This is what will happen to you. Along with a lot of other things. We often associate idols with directly worshiping another god or placing, or placing another god above ours. But today, while it still happens, there are other religions, there are other people that, that believe in other gods and spirits. But today, we, we often forget about the sneaky idols that come in and get us like the idol of individualism, where we are the center of our universe and nothing is more important than me, my thoughts, and my feelings. That that is the most important thing, ourselves. We can forget about the idol of pride, the idol of anger, the idol of social media, the idol of sex, the idol of politics, the idol of self-medication through drugs and alcohol, pain meds, the idol of self-reliance. I have to be in control. I can't, I can't have, I, I can't let anybody else have any sort of control. I have to be in control of my own life. I have to make all my own decisions. All of these can take the place of God as the most important thing in our lives. We can also take good things in our life and turn them into an idol. We can make our spouse an idol, our family an idol, our children the sports teams that we love or are a part of, our hobbies, our fitness. Have you ever met somebody obsessed with CrossFit? These things can become idols in our lives too because they end up more important to us than God. Now these are good things to like and love, but they should never be above God. But the good news is God will never tell you to stop being a good spouse. God will never tell you to stop being a good, a good parent. God will never tell you to stop being a good son or daughter. God will never tell you to not be physically fit. I need to listen to that. God will never tell you to not be passionate about your interests and your hobbies but he wants to make sure that those things are not above him in your life. Going back to Abraham and Isaac, if you know your Bible, you know that, that as Isaac was growing up, there came a point where God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham was willing to do it. And thankfully, God stopped him. What in your life do you need to sacrifice so that God is above all in your life? When our prayers are firmly rooted in who God is, as king, as no one higher, then our prayers are able to help us understand what God is calling us to and what he is calling us out of we start seeing things from the proper perspective. Often in my own prayers, I, and I don't know when I started it, but I will typically start out every prayer, dear Heavenly Father, or I will say, dear Lord. And then I usually immediately follow it with thanking him for something, telling him I love him. What I'm doing at the beginning of my prayers, it was something that, that, that I 
I started doing I don't know how long ago. But it was how I rooted my prayers in him and who he is. By recognizing he's my heavenly father and then recognizing something he's done for me or recognizing just how much I love him. I'm putting him in his proper space in my heart. And then I go on to continue my prayer. We always need, first and foremost, to recognize God and who he is to us when we pray. Because this helps ground us in his grandeur. It helps us see his magnificence. It helps us see his love. And it establishes who he is to us. And that nothing is above him in our life. Remember that Jesus is telling us what the kingdom of God is like and how it functions. And when we pray, we need to recognize that he is on the throne. And we are his servants. From understanding that perspective, we immediately know that our prayers are now intertwined with actions. Because when our father... When our king says to go, we go. If he says to stay, we stay. If he says not yet, we wait. And if he says no, we trust. And we keep praying. We keep praying. We keep seeking. We keep talking to him. We keep listening. We stay connected to the king. We stay connected to our father. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can cry out to you with anything that's on our heart, that we can give you every situation. that we can give you every part of us. You are faithful to us. You are good to us. You love us so much. Thank you for that. Lord, help us put you in the proper space. Help Help us put you above all things in our lives as we serve you, as we love you, as we follow you into action or we wait until the door opens. This morning, there is a old, an old prayer that I just felt was very fitting and I just want to pray it over us. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, have a great week. It was good to see all of you. See you next week. Uh, hopefully, don't forget, we have um, our listening prayer this Thursday. And women, we have the sisterhood on Saturday. So have a great week, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>